the University of Southern Mississippi men's basketball coach Jay Ladner was hospitalized earlier this week. We will have more on this at the top of the show. The Spectrum Center of Hattiesburg is celebrating their 10th anniversary. All of this and more on SNTV. SNTV News for Wednesday, February 7th starts now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello USM and thank you for tuning in for another season of SMTV. I am Amaya Norman and here are your top stories for today. USM owns men's basketball head coach was hospitalized on February 6th, Tuesday morning. Jay Ladner was hospitalized due to a heart-related medical emergency this past Tuesday. Ladner had to step away from coaching for the time being so he can fully recover. He is expected to make a full recovery while preparing for a Wednesday game against Old Dominion. Staff members and players were made aware of their head coach conditions. Juan Cardona, the associated head coach for the men's basketball team, is acting as head coach while Latner is recovering. The Spectrum Center in Hattiesburg is celebrating their 10-year anniversary. SM2's Suvi Lama has more on the story. Founded in Hattiesburg in 2014, the Spectrum Center is the only physical location dedicated to inclusivity and support for the LGBTQ community in Mississippi. As the 10th anniversary celebrations unfold, the Spectrum Center is not only looking back on its achievement, but also towards the future. Just in general, it sort of reaching a 10 year milestone sort of gives us the chance to uh, reflect and restructure. So we're planning for a lot more programs, uh, programs that can hopefully help us reach a wider demographic of people we want to be able to invite more people into the space and help people feel comfortable and welcomed. So it's, yeah, really exciting. If you haven't filled out your FAFSA yet, you still have time. There's a new FAFSA form available. However, there are a few bugs that are being worked through. The new FAFSA is still in a soft launch phase as they worked out the bugs. The people nationwide are reporting issues like logging in, filling in information, and more. This new form has several changes to make filling out easier and faster. This includes requiring people to input their IRS information directly from the IRS website. They also replace the expected family contribution with the student's aid index, which is a different way to calculate how much money a student can get. Problem is, millions of students nationwide can't finish their FAFSA because of technical issues like glitches, website crashes, and more. Students should contact FAFSA directly for help. SMAC has started their year out with many events for students, one of those being a neon skate party. Southern Miss Activity Council, also known as SMAC, hosted a skate party where all students on campus are invited. It was held at the Thad Cochrane Center Ballroom, and students' ID were required to enter. It lasted from 5 to 8 p.m. There was food, music, a photo booth, and, of course, roller skating. Students even were encouraged to come in neon attire. There were so many students that a 30-minute wait line was formed. Students had to wait their turn to grab a pair of skates before heading into the party. SMAC will be returning. SMAC will be returning with more events throughout the semester. Every year, Southern Miss holds a three-minute thesis competition for graduate students of all disciplines. The grad champion of the program for 2023 was Megan Stanley, a PhD student in chemistry. Worked on the design and study of molecular sensors for metal ion detection. She presented on the, de the detection of zinc based on its fluorescence. For the presentation, Stanley diluted her complex topics to something that most people can understand. She stressed that it is very important to present your stories in a way that can be understood by everyone. 
She explained her thesis by relating it to something everyone understands. She made her audience real realize that chemistry is not as difficult as it is portrayed to be by relating it to a household object, Febreze. Stanley encouraged all her graduate students to apply for the program and explain why the competition is so important. Try and think about when the perspective of someone who is not in your field. So that's the goal. And think about what questions they might have and make sure you're putting it in your talk and make sure you, stick, you tell a story to the audience. The three-minute thesis is open to all graduate students that are doing a research on any field in USM. The competition generally takes place in November and graduate students are encouraged to apply. Six years ago, photographer Herbert Randall document, documented the Freedom Summer Movement in Hattiesburg last week. One of the participants gave a lecture about Randall's work and his own time in the movement. Dr. Anthony Harris le lectured about his memories from the movement as part of an exhibit called Faces of Freedom Summer, the photographers of Herbert Randolph. Randolph's work is on display in, in the Gallery of Arts and Designs in the George Hertz Building. Harris grew up during the Civil Rights Movement and shared many of his memories from Freedom Summer. It is so important that we link the past to the present because there are so many things that happen in 64, decades before that, that, that were just wrong. We need to make sure we don't return to those days. Stay tuned for news and more, and here's a quick look at your USM traffic cam on Hardy Street provided by MDOT. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. I am studying to be a NICU nurse to give back that same care that I received. I was born at 26 weeks and was in the NICU for 89 days. Having a support system like March of Dimes is just, it's needed, it's necessary. Improving maternal and infant health is as important today as it was then. Join me in making a difference in the lives of families everywhere. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y, G, K, L, V, W, uh, regular. Are you looking for more in this world? Are you driven by purpose? Then we are looking for you. The big hearted, the bold, the change makers. We are the Peace Corps. With volunteers in more than 60 countries, we join hands with communities, live together, work together, transform lives, and serve boldly together. Are you ready to go the distance to make a difference? Then we have a place where you belong. Welcome back. Here's your flash news briefing. 
and local news constructions is underway for a new museum in Hattiesburg. The new museum will be called the Moeller Military Vehicle Museum. The plan for the museum is to showcase a collection of military vehicles, such as historic Jeeps, trucks, and ambulance that were permanently loaned by Don Moeller. A physician from Georgia, the total cost of the project is about $750,000 and is being carried out by Allen Constructors LLC. The construction for the museum is located across from the African American Military History Museum at the old Hattiesburg Compress site. The Hattiesburg Convention Commission has hopes that the museum will be open for visitors by the end of the year. For state news, a Bay St. Louis man was struck and killed by a vehicle while walking across the highway. The death took place on February 3rd in Hancock County. The Mississippi Highway Patrol at approximately 6 a.m. responded to a fatal crash involving a pedestrian on Highway 603. 31-year-old Michael Lewis Robert was crossing Highway 603 at Kilden Delia road when a 2018 Honda Civics that was driving south on Highway 603 struck him. Robert was pronounced dead at the scene after receiving fatal injuries from the crash. National News NASA announced the discovery of an exoplanet that could be habitable. NASA is calling the ex exoplanet a super Earth and is about one and a half times with the width of the Earth. The planet is presumed to be habitable because its orbits within a habitable zone. The super Earth distance from its parent stars make it possible that liquid water could form on its surface, making it expo exoplanet potentially habitable. The planet is 137 light years away, which described by NASA is considered fairly close to us. The weather has been cold and gloomy recently. Hopefully it will improve. Let's go to Carl with the weather to find out. Hi, I am Carlton Love and welcome to your SMTV weather. Let's get straight to it. Thursday, we will have a high of 70 and a low of 56, with a rain chance of 7% and mainly cloudy skies. Speaking of clouds, our entire five day forecast will be full of cloudy skies. Friday has a high of 77, which is the highest of our week. The low for Friday is 60 degrees. Moving on to the weekend, Saturday will have a high of 75 and a low of 60. Sunday will also be on the warmer side with a high being 70 and a low at 56. Lastly, to wrap up our five day forecast, Monday will finally cool off with a high of 61 and a low of 39. Now heading into our rain chances. You will definitely want an umbrella this week. Thursday starts our rain chances off with 7%. Friday bumps up the chances to 15. Saturday's chances are at 48. Sunday has the highest chances for rain with a 77% chance and Monday calms down with a 54% chance of rain. So make sure you put on your rain boots and carry an umbrella. And that ends your SMTV weather report. Stay informed, stay prepared, whether rain or shine, be weather wise. Join me, Carlton Love, for the latest updates on SMTV weather. See you next time. I am definitely not ready for all the rain. Now on to SMTV Sports with our lovely anchor, Maya Evans.
Welcome back to your SM2 Sports Recap. I am Maya Evans and we have an exciting recap for you this week. So be sure to stay by your screens so you can hear all things Eagle Sports. First up, the track and field Golden Eagles are off to their next meet in the Music City Challenge on Friday, very night in Nashville, Tennessee. The Lady Eagles are now 12-9 after two back-to-back -back home games where Malia Grayson just took over. Malia claimed the weekend with 36 points and 16 rebounds to the top off the wins against Louisiana Raging Cajun and Troy, Alabama. The women's will be back in action this Saturday at 1 p.m. at Buffalo University on the road for the start of their two-game road trip. The men's basketball team is looking rocky as they just dropped two conference matchups back-to-back -back against Arkansas State and Texas State. The Eagles are now 12-11 and, and looking to improve their record as they start their six-game homestead. The Golden Eagles are still undefeated in conference play in the Reed Green Coliseum, so let's see if they can keep it going. The men will be back in action Saturday at 1 p.m. in Reed Green Coliseum as they take on Western Michigan Broncos. Baseball season is upon us as the Golden Eagles hosted the Black and Gold scrimmage this past weekend as a new era of baseball starts at the peak in just one more week. Baseball will be hosting an in-house scrimmage over the weekend if you are like if you like to get a sneak peek. The Golden Eagles always soar in high places as we have one of our very own former Golden Eagles taking part in the Super Bowl 58. Todd Pinson is the running back coach for the Kansas City Chiefs going on to the Super Bowl. Congratulations! And the moment you all been waiting for, the player of the week is Malia Grayson. Grayson had an outstanding performance for the Lady Eagles for their two-game homestead, finishing the weekend with 36 points, 16 rebounds, and two wins. That's all for this week, folks. Make sure to catch us back next Wednesday for a recap of the Eagles. Peace and love. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. Uh, You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. At first, just leaving the house was hard. But when the Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started. Thank you, Maya. Now here's your community calendar. My name is Kennedy Drake and I'm here with the Community Calendar where we gather information from around campus and within the community near you in Hattiesburg. The Southern Miss Inspired Leader Series will have speaker Kimberly Fonten with Intrady to share what inspires her as a professional and leader. The event is February 8th from 9.30 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. in Siena Hall McDonnell Auditorium. Come on out to get a better understanding of life as an accountant. On February 9th through 11th, Camp Camella is having a medieval fantasy, survivor, and hot horror-themed live-action role-play game. The game will last the entire weekend. Check out the ticket pricing on the website on screen. If you want to experience a weekend of fright and competition, this is the perfect activity. For people in the Mardi Gras spirit, a Moon Pie Fest will happen on February 10th at 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. It begins before the Mardi Gras Parade with free corn dogs for the kids, games, and moon pies everywhere. 
The following week, USM is hosting a rally in support of fair pay at USM. It will begin Thursday, February 15th from 12.15 p.m. to 1 p.m. at the Shoemaker Square on the Hattiesburg campus. It aims to gain the attention of lawmakers and government leaders. All faculty, staff, graduate workers, and their supporters are encouraged and, entire, and encouraged to attend. If you have an event you would like for us to promote, send it to sm2news at usm.edu. This is just one way we thank our community for watching Southern Miss and supporting us here at Southern Miss Student Media Center. Visit our website at sm2media.com to keep up with all our news. Signing out, I'm Kennedy Drake, and this has been your community calendar. Stay blessed. are facing hunger. Many are forced to choose between food and other necessities. I'm stuck between paying for medications or paying for food. John from Maine. After rent and power, I can get groceries. It's sad to say food comes last. Anna from Texas. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over six billion meals to people in need each year. I thought pantries were for less fortunate people, but anybody could be less fortunate in a day or even a second. Claire from Virginia. Now I can provide food for my family again. It's not a handout, it's a hand up. Liam from Ohio. No one should have to worry where their next meal will come from. Together, we can end hunger. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. On February 5th, country legend Toby Keith passed away peacefully. Toby was a renowned country artist. He was mostly known for his hits such as Red Solo Cup and Should Have Been a Cowboy. He passed away at the age of 62. His family released a statement on social media revealing that Toby had been diagnosed with stomach cancer in the fall of 2021. His family says that he fought his fight with the grace and courage. The Grammys happened recently, so let's do a recap. On February 4th, the 66th Annual Gr Grammys Award was held in Los Angeles at the Crypto.com Arena. The Grammys were hosted by Trevor Noah and had performance by Billy Joel, Dooley, SZA, and many more. Miley Cyrus walked away with the record of the year of her songs. Flowers. The Album of the Year Award went to Taylor Swift for her album, Midnight. Billie Eilish gained two more Grammars after this year award show. One of, them, one of them for the songs of the year with What Was I Made For from the motion picture movie Barbie. The other was for the best song written for visual media. One of the song, No Time to Die. The Best New Artist Award went to Victoria Monet. And there's your quick recap of the Grammys. to get a flu shot each and every year because flu viruses are constantly changing and immunity from the vaccine decreases over time. Flu vaccines are updated annually to work against that year's viruses. The best time to get your shot is in the fall, but getting it later can still help. Getting a flu shot lowers your risk of getting sick. And if you do happen to get flu, it's likely to be less severe. Adding your own flavor to fashion comes with age. Okay, Diane, look at you! Forgetting how to add doesn't. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's. Some things come with age, some others don't. Around ADHD, there's tremendous ignorance. Most people are not aware of the positives. Can't sit still. Disorganized, can't focus, lazy, stupid. You can't make it. You never listen. You don't train your mind. It's a super skill set. Are you looking for more in this world? Are you driven by purpose? Then we are looking for you. The big hearted, the bold, the change makers. We are the Peace Corps with volunteers in more than 60 countries. 
We join hands with communities, live together, work together, transform lives, and serve boldly together. Are you ready to go the distance to make a difference? Then we have a place where you belong. Join us. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Have you heard about what's been going on down between Universal Music Group's UMG and TikTok? It's been making waves lately. UMG and TikTok were in negotiation trying to figure out the whole music licensing situation. But last week, things took a turn for the worse and the talks fell apart. What was the fallout? Well, it's pretty significant. Around a third of the songs of, on Billboard's TikTok Top 50 charts are now unavailable on the platform. Some of these tracks were huge hits on TikTok, like Money Long, Made For Me, and it's not just recent release either. Even older songs like Sophia, Ellis, Beckstore's Murders on the Dance Floor is missing. UMG say TikTok isn't willing to pay what they believe is a fair amount for the music, which led to this standoff. But here's where it gets even more interesting. TikTok has users that have been uploading their own versions or remixes of songs. UMG isn't too happy about it, claiming TikTok isn't doing enough to address copyright and fragments. But some labels encourage those remixes to go viral, even without proper clearance. On this flip side, TikTok has become the powerhouse in the music industry. Artists and labels are all about tapping into TikTok's massive user base to promote their music. But with so much content competing for attention on TikTok, it's getting harder for music to stand out. It's all just a complex dance between right holders, platforms, and users, and it's fascinating to see how it all unfolds. Now it's time for SMTV's newest segment, SMTV Cinema. Have you heard about the new Oxygen True Crime document series about Selena and Yolanda Saldivar? It's stirring up controversy as Saldivar speaks about foreign prison, offering new details about her relationship with Selena and the events leading to their tragic shooting. Oxygen's news true crime series Selena and Yolanda, The Secret Between Them, dives into the tragic stories of Selena, murdered by Yolanda Saldivar, but conflicting perspectives from Saldivar's family and those involving in the case promise to make it a compelling and controversial watch. It premieres on February 17th and I can't wait to see it. And all of this and more on SMTV Cinema until our next screening. Thank you so much for watching SMTV. Make sure to visit our social media page, like, follow, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Southern Miss Student Media. If you would like to submit a news tip, email us at sm2news at usm.edu. Also, if you would like to advertise with SM2 Media, please reach out to Joshua Wilson at Joshua Wilson, Joshua.Wilson at usm.edu. You can still find all this, all this story and more on our website, sm2media.com. That is it for SMTV. Thanks for joining us, and, and we will see you on our next show. Always remember, Southern Miss to the top. At first, just leaving the house was hard. A Wounded Warrior Project helps you realize it's possible to get out there. To feel a sense of camaraderie again. To find the tools to live life better. 
Through generous community support, we've connected warriors and their families with no-cost physical and mental health services, legislative advocacy, career assistance, and life skill training for 20 years. And we're just getting started.